I am super pumped. I am refreshed. I just got back from my vacation, dude. And boy, are your arms tired. Uh, why? It's just the flying. The it's fly. a really bad joke. I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, no, dude. So um, I, I'm super bummed, though, because last uh, episode of TFL Talking Trucks, you had David, our friend David, here on the show. He and, was fantastic. And I listened to that show. It was really good. But now there's more stuff happening, cause, and I'm firing on all cylinders. <laughs> Which is an irony, because some of the stuff we're talking about <laughs> may not involve cylinders. But, but there's, there's a lot to talk about, and a lot of it has to do with mid-sized trucks. Yeah, it's a resurgence. Well, continued resurgence, I would mm-hmm. say. I mean, mid-sized truck segment in the U.S. have been doing quite well. Yes. Uh, last year, um, people told me, oh, my gosh, they lost sales. What's going on with mid-sized trucks? Uh, but it was a supply issue. Uh, that's my opinion. No, I, I would agree with you. And, and, and if you read the tea leaves, it's pretty obvious that a lot of people were waiting in line to get their hands on mid-sized trucks specifically vehicles like Toyotas and even Fords to a lesser degree, but a lot of other vehicles. And sometimes, like in Ford's case, they had to actually slow down production and move some of the components over to vehicles that are making them more money, which would be like the Bronco. Yeah. So there, there was a lot of things that were happening, but this year looks like things are going to be not only improving, but possibly going through the roof. Yeah, yeah. So a couple of things happened just a couple of days ago. First of all, uh, Ram... Um, Stellantis in general, Mm -hmm. had a big closed-door meeting in Vegas for dealership. That's right. It was at the MGM uh, Grand Hotel. Why weren't we there, actually? uh, Because we're not dealers. No, but we could have snuck in. We we should have snuck in, but you were on vacation, bro. Uh, I know. Yeah, say hi to Harry Potter and no to to (laughs) Stellantis. Thank you. I I went to Harry Potter land. Actually, it's in really Florida. it's really cool. Uh, I, I did the one in, in Hollywood. It yeah. was, it's phenomenal. Dude, I enjoyed it. Um, you know, my daughter and my son really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. My wife also as did well. Did you buy ones? No, oh. they were expensive, dude. I know. It was like 50 bucks for the good ones. 75 in Florida. Because <laughs> well, it's I think Florida. <laughs> Florida had a tax on wands or something. It's no big surprise. <laughs> but it's... Um, but, but I think both of us very much recommend uh, enjoying the Harry Potter land at Universal Studios. They're not officially a sponsor of us yet. But, but they should be. They really should be. <laughs> please, uh, Harry and uh, Hermione. Tell please. you what, if, 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 they, if they sponsor us, yes. then maybe we'll do a Universal to Universal run from uh, California to Florida instead of that other run we did. Yeah, that, that which other, would work much better, I, I would say. So. I would agree. So uh, before we move on, because mm. so first of all, there's Ram midsize truck news that yes. came out of Vegas, even though we weren't supposed to be there and nobody had to could bring cameras. Yeah. Uh, but there's also, Toyota did a little leak. Well, not leak, but they did a, a teaser. Tease. A teaser. Yeah. Uh, they showed us an image, a very darkened image of a, what appears to be a Tacoma. And everybody I know, including us, has tried their best to enhance the image. Yes. To try to bring out as much as they can in terms of the lines. I got to tell you, it's almost impossible. They knew that we would do that. I know. I think um, they cut, cut, cut on to us. Oh. Um, yeah. I was on the plane flying home, and I was enhancing the image on my laptop. Uh-huh. And nothing happened. Yeah. The only thing that you really can do is if you sharpen it up, you can see some of the lines. You can kind of see the bumper. Now, by the way, just based on what I saw in the silhouette, though, I think it's going to look a lot like a smaller version of the Tundra. Yeah, and I think um, you know some of the prototypes, tr- prototype trucks that we saw suggest that as well. That's so, correct. Yeah. And if I was Toyota, I wish they would take more risks. But I, but I th- I don't they, think they will. They're going to be pragmatic because Tacoma is successful as and, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So why why change it too much? But we do think some significant changes are coming. Yes. Now, there are a lot of rumors. Let's talk about those and some other stuff. But before we move on, we have to thank Patreon supporters. Yes, please. Uh, so patreon.com slash TFLcar is uh, where a lot of you support us already. And this is where you can ask us questions, mm-hmm. give us feedback. Just within the last week since I was on vacation, Lance, Howard, Augenbaugh. Christopher Park and LT supported us on Patreon. Thank you, guys. We really do appreciate it. And I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't have time to like read every comment yet, but we'll get to them as soon as we can. Okay. So, in fact, in, in this episode, we'll address at least two of them. So, um, let's move on. Where should we start? Tacoma. Let's talk about the Tacoma first, because a lot of you guys already know the information we know. And and we will be able to bring you some interesting information in the very near future. But right now, 
honestly, the only thing we could talk about are some of the rumors, which are pretty logical rumors. One of which is that there will be a hybrid version. That is a rumor. Turbo 4 with a hybrid, actually, as an option. So that makes a lot of sense considering the direction that Toyota is going with hybridization going across the board. If they do manage to build a Tacoma with a hybrid powertrain of some sort, then pretty much every vehicle, with the exception of their sports cars, will have a hybrid option. Which makes sense. I mean, totally they do sense. hybrids. They're the best at it. They, I they, mean, they're they one are. of the first. They, they are. And they also show that it could be practical, usable, and performance enhancing. And we've seen glimpses of that. But... So okay. my complaint... My, I wouldn't say complaint. My recommendation mm. would be... You know how the Tundra hybrid is already here, right? Yes, We've it tested is. it everywhere. Yeah. Uh, we towed it, uh, towed with it on the iGauntlet World Toughest Towing Test. We took it off road. It did really great. Mm-hmm. We took it off road, but it's tuned for power. Yep. Right. Monstrous power. Lots of torque. Five hundred eighty-three pound feet of torque. Four hundred thirty-seven horsepower. But I think they should also either so keep that version, mm-hmm. but also create like a efficiency-minded one you know, that maximizes efficiency because a lot of people equate hybridization with efficiency. What if what? they made a larger battery, put a port in the side of it Oof. so you could plug it in, get more range, and get better efficiency because you're using a larger battery, which gives you greater range with uh, your engine. Thing. You're saying plug-in hybrid. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, Nobody else is doing it. So they might do this, but maybe not in this first iteration. Yeah. Because they already have a system they called Hybrid Max that's available in the Crown, some other vehicles. And we think that a lot and of the I Crown think, components are going in here. Yeah, and I think they might borrow some of them, tune it for truck use, mm-hmm. right? And then maybe a plug-in is next, but we don't know. I mean, no, yeah. Now, just, just a quick note. The Crown's hybrid system is geared for a front-wheel drive vehicle. We know this. And this truck is rear drive bias. We know that as well. I mean, yes. most likely. Yes. <laughs> it's, I sincerely doubt it's going to be anything else. Um, so, yes, we know that. However, we've been hearing for years that Toyota has been pushing to build more and more modular designs, not only with their platforms, but also their powertrains that can be reconfigured. And this makes total sense. Now, this is another image of what really is a very lightly um, updated Tacoma, but this is actually the Tacoma EV, I believe. Yeah, so they actually showed um, an electrified truck. Mm-hmm. What is almost two years ago? I mean, it's been a while. It's, been, it's over a um, year ago, that's for sure. And of course, Akio Toyoda, the CEO, former. Was, uh, yeah, former. Actually, I thought it was in April that where the guard officially changes. But maybe anyway. Yeah, I, um, yeah. So Akio Toyota is is going to be chairman still, but mm-hmm. but CEO is changing. Right. But they show the uh, concept similar to this. Mm-hmm. What I'm showing is um, patent images from Brazil. Right. That leaked. Uh, well, not leaked, but they're actually submitted. And I believe that's on uh, TFLtruck.com as Ex- well. Exactly. And um, but people enhanced those images and made it look a little bit more production uh, ready. And also, this is this is an image. If you're watching this on on YouTube, um, is exactly the patent drawing that they submitted. Right. So this could be what a Tacoma looks like, but it may also be massaged. And a little frankly, bit. this does not look that much different than the current Tacoma. I mean, and, and that might be the point. Maybe they they want it to look a lot like it. The rear end does look a lot like a Tundra, which is what we are expecting. Really, the big changes are going to be underneath, and hopefully, hopefully. To the cab, the biggest complaint that we've had for years and years, and I've owned a Tacoma, and I loved it, with the exception of the fact that I was extraordinarily uncomfortable driving it. Mine was the second generation, technically speaking, and um, even the new ones are not that comfortable inside, not compared to the competition. So what we're hoping is they change the layout, configuration, and hopefully the size of the cockpit to make it a little bit more competitive. I would and say. we're talking about big dudes. I mean, tall dudes and big dudes. Yeah, right? I mean, almost nobody that works and at TFL is under six <laughs> feet. <laughs> Other than uh, uh, Alex. Alex, yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, both Alexes are under six feet. <laughs> yes. There you go. I was actually m- mentioning <laughs> Alexandra. Yes. Yeah, but I'm talking about Alexander. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah so. Anyways, so a lot of 
tasty news will come soon about the Tacoma. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you know, we've seen prototype images with rear disc brakes because current Tacoma still uses drums. Still uses drums. Also possibly rear coil springs. Yes. Similar to the Tundra. Exactly. Right? So because we know that and they've been hiding their rear suspension with hair, you know, those plastic. Yeah, kind of like what you would see at a car wash, essentially. Those yeah, so they've been thing. hiding it. So I think, you know, the multi-link system in the rear that with makes coils total sense. Um, is going to be there. Like we said, small turbocharged engines, 2.4 liters, mm -hmm. uh, possible hybrid. All of that is coming. And also possibly the Trail Hunter. Right, they are now. They already showed us the Tundra Trail Hunter. Yep, and they said more to come. So right, and the Trail Hunter, for those of you who don't know, is it sort of sits in a different ether than say the TRD uh, off-road package. It is an off-road package, but it's a different type of off-road package. Yeah. So, so really, the TRD off-road package is a little bit more affordable. Mm -hmm. Then there's the TRD Pro, which we all know, you know, has Fox shocks, you know, a little small lift armor. Armor, um, and then the Trail Hunter is kind of a brother to the Pro, mm -hmm. uh, and the in the way that they described it to me is that the Trail Hunter will be like for slow speed kind of rock crawl situations, mm -hmm. and the TRD Pro is for desert running, you know, going faster, which makes a little bit of sense if you think about the competition, because there are plenty of car or automakers, I should say, that are out there building desert runners and, or something that's similar to that and then dedicated uh, rock crawlers. So this is Toyota's way of hitting both at the same time. Perhaps. And also doing um, not just that, but also doing accessories. Right, right? and overlanding too. Yeah, because uh, they showed the steel bumpers, they showed uh, racks, tents. Tow hooks, God forbid. Tow hooks. On, on the bumpers. Yes. So, uh, Can you it, believe it? <laughs> I know we harp on this, but it is a big issue for me at least. So that's the, the news with the Tacoma. So we, we've got a little bit more. There was that teaser, and we should be hearing a lot more about it within the next, I would say, a few months. Exactly. But, uh, well, everybody else wants a piece of the action. Right? That's right. And so let's talk about what could be called the Dakota, some sort of small electric uh, pickup, and when we mean small, it could be a small or or compact, I should say, compact or midsize pickup that is electrified, showed up in Las Vegas at a Stellantis event. Yeah, dealer dealership event. Right. And um, actually, our friends at Carscoops, carscoops.com, um, had a rendering of this about... I think a, it's a fantastic rendering. A few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And this is just kind of an artist rendition of what it could look like. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that this is what this, it'll this look does like. Not, yeah, and there's nothing official at all about it. However, we have heard a few wagging tongues out there talk about the fact that it is on the smaller side. Um, they're not... The, the ones that... who One guy who supposedly reported on it said something to the effect of it, it's going to sit between the sizes of a midsize and a compact truck. That doesn't do us any good because that gives us no information. However, we do have a few things on the platform that's entirely possible that if they're using the, the medium size uh, STLA platform, mm -hmm. which is specific to Stellantis vehicles, and there's four sizes, the STLA platform essentially is very similar to the one that Ford's using underneath let's say the uh, Ford F-150 uh, mm -hmm. Lightning, which is, it has a frame, but then sandwiched in between the frame is the battery and then all your components, four-wheel independent suspension. And uh, dual motors. Dual motors. Front and back. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's a very similar type of setup. Physically, it looks a little bit different. Now, if that's the case, the STLA medium platform is supposed to accommodate batteries between the size of, sizes of 85 kilowatt hour all the way past 105 kilowatt hour. So it can have a pretty damn big battery in theory. Why do I mention this? Well, that's because this vehicle could be based on the same platform as an upcoming vehicle that Stellantis is using for Jeep. And that would be the Recon, which is a whole different thing. And it's going to be on a different podcast, by the way. Stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. But that platform, once again, STLA, medium platform, people think. Mm -hmm. Meaning also on top of all that, that type of setup could lend itself to everything from air suspension to a, the, a serious capability of, of towing, at least for short distances. But we have nothing else on this. However, 
We do know that right now Stellantis, out of all the American manufacturers out there, is on the low end when it comes to electrification. And they have to up their game if they're going to come anywhere near their 2030, 2035 expectations for delivery. They, they're supposed to have new vehicles hitting pretty much every couple months, starting from basically here. And the most recent thing they had was the Dodge Hornet, which is a plug-in hybrid, but essentially it's a Tonale from uh, Alfa Romeo, and nothing about it has anything to do with trucks. Right, right. And they did say that by 2030, every segment that they're in will be electrified somehow. Right. By the way, they're not saying we're going to kill all gasoline power plants or diesel power plants. Correct. They're saying in addition, um, and that's a big sticking point for a lot of people. Yes. Um, because, and that's also a sticking point for me because I'm for choice. Yeah, you I know, am too. You yeah. Know, so, uh, yeah, diesel makes sense for some uh, use cases. Yeah. Electricity makes uh, some sense for other use cases. So give us choice, and then we'll make our decision. Right now, I think that the, the leaders on this, and we're not going to go into a big discussion about what's better or, you know, whatever, but I think that Toyota is trying their damnedest to show that their version of electrification, which is using hybrid technology, is perhaps one of the better ways to go. There's just a lot of people who do not want to adapt to full electrification. And it makes total sense. If you're towing more than 100 miles, dude, it makes total sense. Weekly or daily? Yeah. yeah. Having something that doesn't require an immediate outlet or else you're in deep, deep doo-doo, that makes a lot of sense. So we do understand kind of both sides of the argument. But right now, nobody is building a midsize or a compact electric pickup. Yes, and that brings me to another point, mm. uh, which is, so I was recently at another event and we had a conversation with some other journalists mm -hmm. and they said, is midsize truck segment in the US too crowded? Meaning, can Ram actually break into it, right? Because that's important, that's an important question. It is an important question, but I think it's a simple answer to that. And the answer, I think, is yes. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. More people want trucks. More people want affordable trucks. Look at the Maverick sales and the fact they just can't build enough and you can't even buy them, the new ones at least. Uh, Santa, even the Santa Cruz, it's selling like hotcakes. I guarantee that with only a few exceptions, the market share for something like an all-electric pickup that nobody is currently building in this size category, perhaps undercutting, what's the cheapest pickup right now that's electric probably the uh ford f-150 lightning that's available uh, right now yeah. yeah it's about 55 56 000 so what right if you now. can undercut that by 20 grand or something like that that would be wonderful it would be huge for a lot of people imagine in town deliveries now this thing has to do a few things for one thing they have to have some form of all-wheel drive four-wheel drive system doesn't necessarily have to be a full-blown off-road basher not yet mm. but it has to i think it has to have at least a 250 mile range if not more uh it has to have uh, essentially, a cockpit that is comparable to anything that is modern in terms of all the technical devices and yeah. everything else that go in there. Uh, having a range extender would be great, but Ram still hasn't confirmed that they even are building one, even though it was a huge Or rumor. what it looks like. Actually. Or what it looks like, yeah. exactly. So yeah. we don't know. We don't know. Um, so, and I agree with you, Nathan. I think mm. the answer is yes, there is room for Ram to enter, yeah. even though Jeep Gladiator is also selling well. Uh, but the Gladiator is more of a lifestyle vehicle. It's, com it's yeah, completely, it's a, and it's forty grand for the least, and even more than that, really. Yeah. You can't get one for under forty three. But, but here's my issue: if it is all electric, yeah. because that's what kind of the dealership leak was mm -hmm. about electricity, right? right? I think it might be hard for them to undercut the Gladiator in price. Would you? I mean, no, I just so the Gladiator starts at what thirty eight or thirty nine. It's 000? really, but it's forty now. You can't so, find one for. So this. how do you undercut? Because batteries are expensive. Yeah, electric motors can be expensive, mm. even though you know many manufacturers are you know getting those prices under control. Plus, you have to have all the other features. You have to have a selling point, maybe a fancy tailgate, maybe a folding mid-gate. That's kind of what you I'm know, going on about. You know what yeah. I'm yeah. If, so you have to have some other feature that actually sells it. The reason this won't undercut the uh, Gladiator, for one thing, I think it even has a smaller bed than the Gladiator. The Gladiator's bed isn't that big. But on top of that, the Gladiator is out of the box, a four-wheel drive um, four -door crew, vehicle. crew cab, yes. right? And this is going to be smaller based on urban 
a urban cycle. It's built for the urban environment, right, with maybe light off-roading or something. So the point of this vehicle, I think, is that they will, if they can come close to what a maxed out Maverick is, right? Which is technically 40. 40 as well. Yeah, yeah. It used to be 37, I was going <laughs> yeah, to say, but, but, every, but everything's but moving everything up. is moving up. Right. Yeah. So, or, or even higher. I mean, even with, with, you can, with the uh, Santa Cruz, you can go well over 40. The yeah. point is, is that if they can undercut that with an entry-level version of this, if they can do what Ford did with the Maverick, which blew everybody away, have, I don't know, a rear-drive version of this or with the base battery. Or even the front-wheel drive version. Well, or or front-wheel, but, but uh, my point is, is that keeping it simple, and if they manage to do that, and yes, batteries are expensive and, and have all these issues to them, sure, but Stellantis already has their bids going on the batteries, right? They're already putting them into cars, and they have to. They have to, you know, get to this EPA level. So if they build this, which I think they will, I think that they're winning – Thing is, they have to build it here in the United States to keep it inexpensive. Yes. Um, Find the factory for it. Right. So what factory is closing down right about now? The one that's building the Cherokee. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm super. How about this? Let's take a small break. Yeah. Good timing. Let's take a small break Uh because I am super upset about the Cherokee. Yeah, I am too. Even though it's not a truck, we're both sad. All right. Let's take a small break. All right. Well, how about that? Jeep is discontinuing the Cherokee name? Is that true? Yeah. So it, it, it sounds like what they had a problem with. First of all, sales dropped drastically. And this is during COVID. And it just went downhill, downhill. You could see things were coming because they took, I think, five different trims. They knocked it down to three different trims. And then they got rid of the V6. I mean, it was the writing was on the wall. But... What we expected and what they initially were saying was there would be a replacement for the Cherokee. I don't see one. Well, well, we don't know anything about the replacement yet. But nothing. But there could be something, uh, like we talked about, a plan to build the next smallest truck for Ram. Mm -hmm. Could it be at this plant where the Cherokee was being built? So the Belvedere plant in Illinois is... Isn't that where Roman idle. grew up at Belvedere? No, that was something else. No, no, no. no. He 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 grew up in a salt mine, <laughs> uh, mining um, cobalt. I think actually, Sorry. No, not salt mine. Um, no, in Illinois, there was this. There is a factory, a very large one, Belvedere, which has been idled. And what they're saying currently, they being Stellantis, is production of EVs is extremely expensive, and to mitigate the amount of money that they would be pushing onto the customer in order to start building EVs, doing things like this, which sounds like this is not the only plant that's going to be idled, um, it's necessary in order for them to actually build competitive EVs that are financially beneficial to both the company and the consumer. Well, because they need time to refurbish the factory. Which costs a lot of money. And time also. It, it, and it, time. it, it requires both. Yeah. It's not like they can snap their fingers and start building something that they're showing. They can show any concept car they want. And one thing about Stellantis is that they show concept vehicles up the Yang. That's kind of the cool thing about the, you know Jeep and Dodge and all that is that they have all these really interesting vehicles that shows concepts. But when you want to build them, you have to do an awful lot of work, and switching a factory over from building an internal combustion vehicle to an electric vehicle or even a PHEV vehicle, which I think is even more likely, mm-hmm. well, that takes a lot of work and a lot of money. Yeah, well, I just hope um, the Cherokee name comes back as something else, uh, because they do have the Grand Cherokee still. I mean, that yeah. name is still there. I and don't has, think they're going to get rid of that. It has so much heritage. I mean, the, the Cherokee, Cherokee name I also. Thought the Cherokee, we all agree here at TFL, all of us. That for a crossover, this is a vehicle without a frame, and this is a vehicle that is a front-wheel drive bias, right? So essentially a car. It is the most off-road capable in its class. Now, other vehicles have come along and definitely challenged it, but they're a little bit smaller, like the Ford Bronco Sport, which is excellent, but a little bit smaller. Um, I thought that the Cherokee Trailhawk was outstanding off-road. Yeah. For, yeah. for what it was. And Okay. All right. So we have more news. Yes, we do. News. Yeah, let's so go back to trucks. Even Sorry, though guys. we've been upset about the Cherokee. Yeah, we're over. Um, <laughs> um, we have more news from Ford because mm. they announced, of course, their new uh, electric city, Blue Oval City plant, which is a factory and also a city. And it's 
gargantuan, and they've got a lot done already. It's it's remarkable how quickly they've moved. Yeah, because uh, one of the buildings is you know halfway done ish, maybe. Um, and also, I've got a little bit of news about my Chevy Colorado that I ordered ah. seemingly months ago. Um, it's not but seemingly, it was months it was, ago. It was months ago. Um, it was in November, I think yeah. November 1st of last year. Um, it's being shipped. Fantastic. It's being shipped. But there's a, there's a but. <laughs> no. There's a but. So yeah. which one do you want to start with next? Um, well, well, how about we... Well, we, let's do the Ford Yes, story. let's talk about Ford because, yeah. So... Uh, Ford, by the way, they, they invited a few um, journalists, but we weren't on their list, mm. on the invitation list to see the factory. That's a real shame. Uh, but this is still very important because they're saying this new plant will build several electric vehicles, including the Project T3 electric truck. So they did not provide information about what that truck might be necessarily. Uh, but what could it be? Well, we, we know it's an electric truck. We... It's a pretty good assumption that it's a smaller truck. Now, in the announcement, they did not say it was an F-150. No. They didn't say it was in the Ford F-Series family. So those are very telling. Uh, a lot of rumors about the, this truck being small as well, or smaller. Now, there is something very interesting, which I think Ford did not intend. It's entirely possible we may know what it looks like, or at least a little bit of what it looks How? like. How? On a patent that Ford recently put out there for a, a swing arm, um, what is it, uh, is like a the, crane that would can bring uh, items into the back of the truck. What? Yes, yes. You didn't see this? No. Okay. Was I on vacation for too long? You were on vacation way too long, my friend. So the picture that they have, which is sort of a, a simple drawn picture, essentially, shows a very unusual truck that they're modeling it with. Normally speaking, when... I've looked at patents for Ford or, or any of the other automakers. The truck in question, when they're showing a component on it, looks very similar to what is currently in production. This one didn't look anything like it at all. It had an unusual front end that looked a lot like something, you know what it looked like? It looked like the canoe, like the canoe you drove in the front. Oh, like almost like a cap forward design? Yes, yes. So that design, I know you're going to search there while I'm talking. I'm, I'm a searching. I, I'm sorry, I um, totally forgot. I, I, I think that's it. That might be well, it. Well, but no, that no, looks like an F-150. No, that looks like F1. an F-150. Right. The what I'm talking about didn't look like that, and it was um, when you guys search it because I know you're going to. If Andre doesn't find this before we're done with the broadcast, um, I think that the way that design, yes, the cab forward design, makes a little bit of sense because Ford was talking about building something all new. And they wanted to build it, I believe their words were, they wanted to build something that was rugged, that was modern, that was obviously electric, that was easy to work with and had more, I, I think that they were hinting a little bit more of an urban, you know, build to it, so to speak. So the vehicle that I saw uh, when they were showing the mm -hmm. sketch, I wish, wish you could find it. I'm so sorry I didn't okay. mention that's, this before the broadcast. That's okay. Um, is uh, if you look at it, it looks a lot like a canoe from this one angle. Now, what I'm talking about, once again, is the patent is for a, um, it's like an arm that comes out of the side of the vehicle. Uh, oh, there it is. I got uh -huh. it. I think I got it. Bingo! Oh, Nathan wins. Sheesh. Yes, and you almost said a bad word. Oh, I almost got you there. That's what I'm talking about. And you got to you gotta agree with me. That normally when Ford does something like this, even a basic drawing, mm -hmm. they normally would put in, I don't know. Like, like an F-150, something or Maverick, basic. Exactly. Yeah, something basic. So why did they put that on there? That's. So this is also kind of a part of the almost like a bed a movable rack system that mm -hmm. helps you bring almost like a winch system. Yes. I mean, something but helps you bring something on board. The entire thing slides out. It's, an, it's like a two. And I thought there was an, a separate arm that popped out too, but I... I I look at a lot of patents and I get confused easily because, well, you guys know me. But anyway, the drawings that you're looking at on this vehicle certainly look like something other than an F-150. And they don't look like a Maverick at all to me either. So this looks like something very different. And on top of that, yes. this could have an extending tailgate, which has been rumored for years, where it actually will slide out and allow you to take motorcycles or ATVs and just drive them up this tailgate into the truck without ramps. And I gotta tell you, that would be really cool because one thing we hate are 
Ramps. We all hate ramps. Everybody. Alex hates ramps. Yes. Well, plus TFL bike, TFL bike channel. We can carry our motorcycles and bicycles. Precise Amundo. Right, right there. Right. As long yeah. as the bed is long enough. So it'd have to be, I mean, it'd have to be like a six foot bed or at least with the tailgate down, it would have to be over six feet. You could, in theory, put in two motorcycles side by side and use this system to drag them in there and not have to worry about ramps or anything else. But this, this is great. Um, by the way, when companies patent things like this, sometimes they never come to production. Exactly. This, but, there's, there's no... So there's always a grain of salt. But, but I'm glad this is happening because it's pushing competition, right? Exactly. People want to compete against each other. Truck space is very competitive. Um, and that's well, what we're talking about with the Dakota truck, too. A couple of years ago, we did a video called Tailgate Wars. Oh, like yes. Three years ago, I think, four years ago. And it's ago. still happening. It, exactly, exactly. So even though I know some of you guys are like, just give us a regular tailgate. We don't care about this. But you know what? The reason they're building so many of these weird tailgates and everything is because a lot of people do care about them. So Ford currently is kind of lagging. Not everybody, but they're lagging some people in terms of uh, all the stuff that a tailgate can do. There's currently... They have, for, for a couple of years now, for a while, like five, six years at least, is a tailgate that actually has a little step that comes down and there's a little grab handle. And it works. But if you compare it to the stuff that General Motors is doing and Ram is doing, it's not quite as, I don't know, interesting or whatever you want to call it. So this, the possibility of having a tailgate that extends to a ramp that slides out and can support enough weight to put a motorcycle on is awesome if they do it. But... But once again, let's come back to this. This is the patent image, and maybe we can post this later on on a TFL truck or something so those of you who are listening can see the image I'm talking about. That cab in this image, so, that truck, is nothing like anything I've ever seen Ford sketch. Can I tell you a backstory, a, a small backstory? Please. Um, this was at the introduction of the 2020 Super Duty. This was in Phoenix area in Arizona. And uh, I was actually there with Stephen Elmer. Remember Steve? Oh, of course I remember. Steve's my boy. Uh, yeah. So we were there, and we were actually having some off-the-record conversation. Can I? I can you do an off-record no, conversation where public? No, but what I can say <laughs> is I was very passionate because I was talking to one of, um, you know, Mr. Truck's friends, uh, mm -hmm. Ken's friend. Uh, Gary. I was talking to Gary uh, before that event, mm -hmm. and we, we got super, super excited by the, by the notion of a cab forward design. This was when I was thinking about buying a B B Buhanka van, which is an old cab forward design. Yeah. This is when Canoe was originally almost, you know, having some concept drawings, right? Mm -hmm. right. Uh, because it's a more efficient use of space. It is indeed. And I told this to the Ford engineers. This was three years ago. Three years ago. Um, I'm not taking any I'm credit. I'm giving you so much credit no, right No, no, zero credit. All the credit in the world if they do this. Um, I also wrote an op-ed. This is, of course, public. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I wrote an editorial story about how smart the canoe design is. By the way, canoe... We have a recent video. I was in Which is a very popular video, too. Yeah, it has a huge number, number of views, almost 600,000. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I went for a ride in it, and we're going to drive it soon. Um, it's a small company, right? There's always that doubt, you know, can a small company survive? Can they do things? And they've gone through a couple of changes, too, in terms of leadership and financing. Yeah. yeah. And, and of course, they're also publicly traded, yeah. and their stock price is no bueno. <laughs> no. Uh, not, uh, low. Yes. Low, low price. Yeah. Anyways, but a company like Ford with so many resources, they're building their own city. By the way, they also announced, well, there's a story separate of this, that Ford's electric division is set to lose like several billion dollars. This, this is not unexpected, though. That because they're investing all e this money. Exactly. And Ford said that early on. Uh, right when they came out, when it blew everybody away with, yeah, we're building electric trucks and vehicles now, get used to it. They said this is going to be huge investments, billions, and they did expect a loss. So this isn't that much of a surprise. So this is like building the foundation exactly. for the house that will be there. Uh, you can literally see the, bu <laughs> the building the foundation right here. The picture we have up, for those of you who are only listening, um, is this massive you know, construction uh, uh, project that's going on, yes, and it's for their production, one of their production facilities, and it is absolutely massive, and it's, it looks like it's like half done. Uh, but the point here is that so, without investment, you cannot build, and then of course you drop a little bit when you do that investment. It makes sense. 
And of course, a company, a new company like Canoe or some others mm -hmm. does not have that capital. I mean, even though yeah. they've tried to build up that capital through many means. Uh, so a company like Ford, when they say something like this, I try, I, I tend to listen very carefully. That would be exactly, and it's the same with General Motors and even uh, Stellantis. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And um, Toyota, of course, Toyota, and others, many yeah. others. But, but with the smaller companies, and, and, and Canoe has a product that runs and has run for a while that they can take journalists like Andre and put them in there and drive them around. That's fantastic. And it looks like a viable thing. However, even with that, and we've driven in other vehicles, haven't we? Bollinger. Mm -hmm. Bollinger mm -hmm. being one of them, mm -hmm. that just, just it, they didn't make it. No, Not really. No. They sold off, essentially, and they're, they're done. Um, we're hoping that Canoe makes it. Could you imagine a Ford invested in Canoe? And what we just looked at there is a harbinger of what's coming? Yeah, but, but, but the thing is, Ford is working with Volkswagen, uh, sharing technologies and some, some you know, production capabilities which as well. Which we've already so seen some of the Those are of two that. giant companies collaborating. They are indeed, which um, is a smart thing. And same with like Honda and General Motors are getting together for, for battery tech. I think the question is, if Canoe can bring some patentable technology that Ford does not have, mm -hmm. that would make it attractive for Ford to buy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I agree. But now, Ford has already invested also in Rivian. Big time, oh, yeah, uh, like yeah. five hundred million, and then and then a couple or the billion on top of that, or something like that. Um, but the point, and that that's done. Apparently, they're all their their partnership is already finished. But what I'm looking at with Canoe is that Canoe can build a pickup truck. Canoe can build a van. Canoe can build you know passenger carrier vehicles and and go stretch them and shrink them. The platform is completely modular, from what I recall yes. from the, your video. Yes, and so in that. Could you imagine if another automaker came along and said, mm, you're suffering, we get it, here's X amount of money, we're now partners, in other words, we own you, and then go from there. Now, I'm not saying that's what's happening. However, looking at this patent image, it certainly looks a lot like a canoe from the front, but look at, look at that. You could just see the hint on the front a of little the rounded light. Right. Right. I mean, think about that, guys. This, this image... It may be nothing, but with the announcement of this T3 and the fact that this is out there in the public, I think that there may be a connection, which means that this could be could be a hint of what that T3 is. So, yeah, investigative skills. Nathan Adlin, thank you ba very much. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I think – so So when, when they say Project T3, mm -hmm. um, so many people um, – and it says next generation. Right? Yes. Many people assumed it's going to be the next Lightning. Which is a reasonable mm. thing, but no, but they already have a Lightning Rouge, separate building just yeah. for Lightning, which could build the next Lightning if if they had to, because that's where the F series is. Exactly, it doesn't make any sense to to move that per se, and the thing is that they can build it in the same facilities, and that's the whole point. And also, of course, the Super Duty. You might be wondering, what about the big trucks? Mm -hmm. Well, they're built elsewhere, you know, in in Kansas City, uh, Louisville, right, um, and other areas. And Ford said electric. That was the other part of the T3. Look at the T3 press release. Oh, they oh yeah, yeah, because the whole Blue Oval City, the whole premise is, 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 out, that, for is, that, is out for electricity. Right. Yeah. So we're, I doubt, I sincerely doubt we're going to see any heavy-duty electric Fords anytime soon. They're doing diesels, and they're going to stick with that for a while. And they've invested into gas V8 technologies. Even more gas V8 yes. technology, yes. exactly. So, so for a few years at least. Yeah, Maybe a hybrid of some sort. That And Ford, by the way, kicks ass when it comes to hybrid technology on full-size pickup trucks. The proof is right here sitting next to me. Yeah, I owned an F-150 hybrid. I was very happy with that. It was a damn good truck. Um, yeah, I mean, it had a couple of um, like hitches. Sometimes this, it wasn't as smooth. You know, transitioning from electric power to gas power. That's because you're getting old. But 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 no no. But but everything was you know. I think even there's some prototype. Um, sorry, spy images right now where Toyota is apparently having a few F-150s at their facility. So they're studying what Ford has of, done. Of and, course they. And are. of course they yeah. study each other. Well, you all have the time. to you have to benchmark the F-150. But the F-150 I think was had a combination of both uh, good efficiency in the city. Great efficiency in the city. Mm. I got up to 26 MPG in that truck in the city. You used to come rolling up here bragging about how well you did coming in. Yeah. If I took the side roads, my, uh, I would have a smile yeah, arriving at the office. Exactly. If I took the highway, I would have a frown. You would have a frown. That's yeah. true. Because it, its highway mileage was okay. It wasn't it's still any, a big truck. It's still right? a big truck, right. Anyways, so I think hybrid um, is still a very viable solution, of mm -hmm. course, for many, many trucks.
Um, so you just there it is. A, okay. a couple of so I do wanted to make an update about the Colorado. Ah, now it's the Colorado. So let's do the backstory real quick. You bought this po- November. I, I, I ordered it. Ordered it. Sorry. Yes, uh, I ordered it in November. Uh, and actually, how about this? How about we, let's take another break? Okay. A quick break, uh, because we, I also have a couple of questions from Patreon mm-hmm. that we can address, um, and also continue the story with the Colorado. How okay, that? that sounds great. And we're back. Yes. So I ordered it in November. And the reason why it was November, it was like the first day where the books opened. Mm-hmm. I'm using quotes, right? The ordering books. So I got, I picked out the truck. We did a whole episode on this already. Yes, we did. <laughs> yeah, you, it, it's, it's out there. It's actually quite popular. It shows Andre next to a shadow of a vehicle that doesn't exist. Ouch. Um, so then um, I went to an event where we drove several Colorado mm-hmm. trucks in San Diego area, so- SoCal. And I actually drove almost the truck I ordered. Which is a it's, trail boss, by the way. It's a trail boss with a mid, uh, mid power level, so 310 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. Mm-hmm. And it was in the color I ordered, which, was, which is nitro yellow. So this kind of vibrant yellow color. Which is cool. The last time you had a yellow vehicle was your Hummer. Well, it was beige. Was it beige? I always thought it was kind of a yellowish color. No, it's you know it's that color that GM used to paint everything uh, with. Why did I think it was yellow? Because all the other Hummers well, back then were yellow. Anyway, it, it doesn't matter. There is a bright yellow Hummer color, and that was not mine. Okay. Because that looked like a school bus. Uh, mine was not a school bus. <laughs> um, but so anyway, so we've driven, journalists have driven several Colorado engines. Not the ZR2 yet. Mm-hmm. The ZR2 um, only is available with a high output uh, that offers more torque. Actually, uh, that's coming in April. And that could be a separate event in itself. Yeah, and, and that's, and that's event. still coming. Yeah. Um, but my truck wasn't shipping. So there was a news. Uh, I knew it was built because my dealership, my dealer representative told me it was built. Mm-hmm. But it's been hanging at the factory for a few weeks. And I believe the reason is because it wasn't EPA rated for that particular engine option. That makes sense. Uh, the base engine is rated already. We did a story about mm-hmm. this already. Um, those trucks are shipping. Also, the new GMC Canyon is not shipping yet because it's only available with the higher output engines. So that's for the same reason, possibly. And that event hasn't happened yet. Ah, uh, that too. So GMC is not ready yet to kind of ship it. Okay. But I recently learned that it left the factory. Ah. Yes. So if it left the factory, it's on a train. Where, where, what factory? Or a truck. Uh, Wentzville, Missouri. Missouri. It's about 850 miles away-ish. Now, under normal circumstances, Andre would fly out with bated breath to pick up his vehicle. We've done this several times, actually. But in this case, he did not do that, uh, which makes sense because the the dude is busy. (laughs) Am am I wrong? So, okay, you got a trail bus that's nuclear yellow. What what color was it? Not nuclear, nitro. Nitro, whatever. Okay, (laughs) it's nitro yellow. And uh, so it has the off-road package, uh, but it's not the full-blown off-road one. It's not a zero two, right? And you got the mid-level, so you didn't get all the goodies on the inside, right? You wanted to keep it somewhat inexpensive. Actually, I I got mostly a basic trail bus. Mm -hmm. So... I may regret it later, mm. but I think the interior will be fi- just fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did have to get; they don't have LED headlights on the Trail Boss. Really? Uh, so they're po- they're positioning a little bit more of an affordable choice. Right. But you know how those basic he- headlights are kind of the kind of crap. Kind of, yeah. Although not, not very bright. They're not, but they probably will work better in this environment right now. Well, in, Snow. in the frozen. Tundra? Yeah, yeah, because LEDs don't melt, melt the ice off headlights, right. whereas in regular ones do. Right. Um, but it, 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 that's only a minor issue. Um, so do you have heated seats? No. Oh, my God. You're so being primitive. I, 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 I'm going to call Buhanka, too. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Everybody keeps telling us that we review expensive trucks. I know. Well, I bought, I bought a cheap little trucky thingy, too. So, yeah, I mean, so, I totally get it. So, hey, we're... we're, we're being real here, we're using our own money. You use your money to buy yeah, your truck. Every I'm using it. my money to buy my truck. So. And there's no discounts or anything else, by the way. We're not getting an inside baseball here. We we're paying no. the price, the MSRP for these vehicles. Yes. I'm hoping I can talk them down a little bit because I've been waiting. Uh, anyway. Uh, but it's not a special treatment. No, uh, no, for not sure. at all. 
So anyway, so there is a little bit of news. I wanted to point this out, though. So my dealership representative just sent me an update mm -hmm. um, where they're, they're having tr – so I had one piece of information that it left the factory and another piece of information that it hasn't left the factory. Mm. So there's a little bit of a delay in the system or right. maybe some confusion. But here's what I wanted to say. Like if you're buying from uh, one of the newer automakers like Tesla – some others, or even Porsche, some of the established automakers, you get a VIN, you know, when you order it and it's in the system, mm -hmm. you know, there's a comes a time where your vehicle is assigned a VIN identification number, yeah. and then you can have an app or something else, that, and you, that and you track it. it. Yeah. Right. I but, wish they had that at Hyundai. You know, it's built this time, mm -hmm. and then it's going here. Maybe you, you know... But, but but they're not offering that. No, they're not. But I want to I want to point out something very important about this. Your truck essentially is an all new truck, even though the name is back. So new VIN numbers going on these all new trucks that have just been squeezed out of the factory during major product shortage in terms of components. All that stuff feeds into this. So I think that something like that could happen in the future. Look, we're at a point in automation where this should happen, period. You oh. guys out there deserve to have a tracking number because it's your hard-spent money, and you want but to see where the vehicle is in terms of its production and getting it But it's to also you. part of the fun. Like, that's the point. You, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Because it's like, it's like waiting for a huge holiday or something. Your present is being built, and you want to know exactly where it's at. Mm -hmm. And it's like – so – all I'm saying is that they should improve those systems. I agree. And actually have that. I want them to do a thing where, and they can kind of sort of do that for some journalists and maybe if you're a VIP here. But in Europe, there are some automakers, I believe Volvo still does this, where you can actually go and watch your vehicle being built, take delivery of your vehicle, and then drive around in that environment before shipping it or whatever you need to do. Now, I know that there's different car companies that do different things like that. I would love it if all of them did that. Full transparency. I get to see my car. I mean, imagine the vacation and the money that you and your family would bring into that area, you know, in terms of being a tourist. I would totally go out to watch my car being built. I would totally do that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it would be awesome. Yeah. Make, make a larger gangway where you can actually walk well, along and see the thing being dipped in and the pool and all that stuff. Where and have a roller coaster outside where your family can be in the roller coaster. Well, it depends on the automaker. Well, true. <laughs> so <laughs> Ford will not have a roller coaster. You're lucky if they'll give you one. <laughs> but actually Ford, though, they do sometimes cater to people so, who want to see their vehicle being well, built. With the Bronco, what Ford um, implemented is there was a stage in the factory where a picture was taken of your Bronco. Which is fantastic. And I then love, they yeah. send that picture to the new owner saying, hey, your Bronco is being built. I think that's awesome. That's a lot of fun. It, that's really cool. Yeah. And for people who really want to get into the ownership experience, I think it's great. But take it up a notch. Why not? This way, I mean, think about your public relations. This is beautiful for all PR. Bring them in. You know, if you're... Subaru, put in puppies in the plant so people can play with them and get love. And I'm not even trying to make fun, <laughs> but I'm serious. You know, use that. And then, you know, you can actually have a full live thing going all the time. I know that there are certain plants that are like, well, we have certain secrets we don't want to discuss or whatever. Okay, I get you it. You have a separate area. Exactly. Yeah. A separate area where the public can get access. I think that would be a really good idea. And I have a feeling that that would be something that... Yes, I know there's certain issues with uh, liability, but you can make it safe, and I think that people would definitely pay to go. Sweet. Um, can I? Can we address one of the comments? At Please Patreon? do. I'm sorry, I went yeah. on a tangent. Oh well, no, no, it's okay. Uh, this is what the podcast is about. It's our <laughs> tangent. Uh, okay. Ten tangents. So Lance has supported us recently. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, Lance, uh, for huge support that you're providing. And Lance has a message here. Okay. He says, "I'm new to Patreon, but have been following you guys for uh, since the early years." Mm. Um, so that, thank you, Lance. Uh, he says he lives in Salt Lake City, and he has owned uh, first edition Bronco. He's also had an Ionic 5. We have a lot of experience with that. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, he also, listen to this, he owned three Mercedes AMG cars. Uh, two of them were with stage two Rantac packages. Whoa. And he also had an AMG GTS with a stage three Rantac package. What do you do for a living, Lance? Uh, and... But, but but wait, there is more. Now he purchased one of your favorites, 2020 Power Wagon. And then 
Oh. He went to Carly suspensions. Okay. Uh, got a Carly pint up system with 37s on his power that wagon. Desperately needs 35s or 37s. That's 33s that it comes with, right? Yeah. Well, wait. Itty bitty 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 tires. Very cool. Send us a picture. Did he send a photo? No, not yet. Oh, send a photo. S so, Lance, yes, please send us a... And thank you for your support, Lance. We truly appreciate it. And whatever you're doing for a living, please let me know because it sounds like you make good money. Yeah, because we don't. <laughs> um, and then he says, if you're going out to Moab again and mm -hmm. you need another truck or support vehicle, he'd be happy to meet us there uh, in his power wagon. So, Lance, by the time you hear this... We're going to be just a couple days away from or heading. Or might be on the way to Moab. We might be on the way to Moab. Uh, Roman and Tommy are leaving on Saturday. I'm leaving on Sunday leading up to Easter Jeep Safari. And then we're going to be there for three days. And during that time, we are going to certain events and whatnot, but we will be there. So if you happen to be in Moab, send Andre a link or a note, and then he'll send one to us. Or you can talk to us through Patreon, actually. Yeah, you could and talk to us. Yeah, on and this, let us on know. Yeah. yeah, let us know where you are, and we'll try to, to do a quick little meetup if you're down there. I don't think we need a support vehicle, though. Not this time. Not course. this time. Uh, there's going to be some. We're going to be running around shooting videos as often as and we can. And also, isn't it like the most crowded time? That's the problem. Time of Moab. Easter Jeep is awesome, but it's also the most crowded time. Ever, but he can afford a hotel. Trust me, you know? the dude has like three Mercedes. Come on, but 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 it is. No, he could sleep probably on top of his uh, uh, power wagon because go. he's got everything. Also, Green River still has some uh, rooms open as well. Uh, if if you are interested in coming down, but anyway, yes, and uh, thank you for your support, Lance. Uh, that is. I love the power wagon. So let's continue this conversation, yes. uh, Lance. So really appreciate that. Um, there is also one other comment, I believe, here. Oh, from LT. Yes. So LT supported us also. Thank you very much. Thank you, LT. Um, and um, he says he is in the process of purchasing a 5,500 sized truck. So he wants to go like commercial medium duty yes. truck, which I support, by the way. Now I'll tell you why. Um, and he had a question about ratings of the engine because the bigger trucks, 4,500s and 5,500s, have horsepower and torque ratings that are less than the 3,500 dualies, for example. Is that because of their weight? Well, it's because of uh, they're tested differently, mm -hmm. right? So LT um, is asking here, why is that? Is it bad? Uh, no, it's not bad. Um, so the, the, it's chassis dyno versus engine dyno ratings, mm -hmm. but it also has to do with emissions. Ah, okay. So, so um, we could have a whole you know segment of a show about it, but LT, I just wanted to let you know that even though your torque rating or your horsepower rating may be lower on a 5500 Ram, or it could be a Chevy, mm -hmm. could be you know even a Ford F550. Um, first of all, you have gearing, so those trucks are usually built for payload, huge payload numbers. We're talking about eight, nine. 10,000 pounds of payload numbers. Two to three times what a, a 250 would be. Yeah, so first of all, huge payload numbers. They have different rear axles, mm -hmm. different ratios, which are meant for moving heavy loads. So if you're worried about power, you shouldn't worry about power. You're not going to win a lot of drag races, mm. but you'll have enough power to pull heavy trailers and move heavy, heavy, heavy loads. Also, 5,500 pound, uh, 5,500 series trucks have a wider front axle mm -hmm. and better turning radius. So uh, LT, I would say, you know, don't worry about it. Just if you like the truck, purchase it, um, and don't worry about the ratings. There you go. Yeah. I mean, Usually he pays attention to those ratings, but in this case, I think the point here is that it's an overbuilt vehicle for yeah most and applications. And so. And everybody says, oh, it's derated. Well, it could be derated slightly, but also longevity is a huge deal mm -hmm. with commercial vehicles. And you're kind of buying, it sounds like you're buying a commercial ve vehicle for private use, mm -hmm. which is also possible. And There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. No, no. So you're getting a heavy built truck that still could be comfortable and very, very useful. There you go. All right, you know what? Maybe send him an additional email or uh, and reach out and let him know what you're going to do with that truck. That way, Andre will have a better idea in terms of tow ratings or hauling or whatever. Yeah, because he didn't mention Ram or Chevy, so yeah. you didn't say which one. Yes, so so so, so mention that too. So yeah, thanks, LT. And then anything so, else? So no. Oh, uh, Parnell Robertson, who's supported us for years, actually, uh, also has something here. Thank you, Mr. Robertson. Uh, thank you. 
Oh, he had a question about he was watching a video. When was this? Maybe maybe a few days ago. Okay. And all of a sudden the video became unavailable. What? So I don't know which video you're talking about, uh, 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 Parnell, but uh, we're also human. Sometimes TFL makes mistakes, believe it or not. Sometimes? <laughs> what? what, what? <laughs> Every week we make a couple of mistakes, but the question is, if can we fix them quickly? No, no. So we don't do this very often. Maybe, you know, once in a blue moon, once a year. Uh, we publish a video. Sometimes we have to take down. Exactly. For some reason. Uh, but so we apologize if you were caught in that experience. Uh, really sorry, but I can't um, think of anything we brought. We took down from truck recently. I don't know if it was truck. It may have been. It, it may, may have been, been another channel. But the point is, alltfl.com is where everything TFL related is. Mm-hmm. Alltfl.com, and because we do have eight channels and four websites and three podcasts. Yeah, uh, so. just, uh, which is just awesome. Um, <laughs> but if you can, if you go to that website, as opposed to, to looking at individual pages on, on YouTube, the most recent versions of the videos, stories, and everything else are on that page. And so you may be able to click on that, and whatever story, for some reason, that became unavailable or video, m- may have been updated or fixed. And, and, and re-uploaded. And re-uploaded. Yeah. So definitely try alltfl.com just to get the most recent version. Yeah, thank you, Pernell, for your support and for your questions. We do appreciate it. So anyway, so I think we can wrap up by saying that the world of midsize truck is going to be sweet this year and next year. My favorite trucks. Small and midsize trucks are absolutely my favorite trucks. And I, yes, I love the power wagon, but you know, it, <laughs> in my life, in my lifestyle, I can't do one. So these, these have always been great, which is why I have a small one. Well, that doesn't sound right. But, uh, <laughs> but, Small pickup. Pickup, thank you. Uh, but the point is, is that I think that for a lot of people out there who are really looking at trying to find a way to spend less money for having something with proper utility that can actually be a truck, these new mid-sized numbers that I'm seeing are really impressive. And I have a feeling that Toyota is going to be mind-blowing. Mm-hmm. I bet you it's going to be good. And the numbers are just getting better to the point to where we're at a point where mid-sized trucks are performing as well as full-sized trucks from, say, a little over a decade ago. Really impressive numbers. So I, I'm excited for the consumer because you could actually save and buy something as opposed to paying fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 for a full-sized truck. Exactly. And uh, when I get my Colorado... You can be sure I'm going to put it through the battery of tests, even oh, though TFL yeah. doesn't own it, but I do. I'm still... But that, that's what we do. That's what we do. Yeah. You know, you've done several videos with your little pickup. Oh, yeah, and I'm doing another uh, one coming up soon. Yeah, so I'll do my, uh, videos with my Colorado. We're also going to compare it to some other trucks that we have mm-hmm. and other mid-sized trucks. So, and then, of course, the ZR2 video is still coming probably right. in April. Um, and then on and on and on, the Tacoma and maybe... I don't know when we'll learn more about the Dakota-ish truck. Uh, Official name is still TBD, right? Right. So they haven't announced it. We're using Dakota because it's a very popular name. Yeah. And a couple years ago, they did reacquire the name. uh, So they have the, so uh, Stellantis owns it. Yeah. Right. So yeah, so as soon as we know, you will, you will guys. Hell yeah, we'll do a separate video all on that too, I think. So yeah. It's worth staying up for and paying attention to. So thank you guys very much for following us. We truly appreciate it. Thank you for your support. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, next week, uh, we already talked about Easter Jeep Safari. Yeah. But also New York Auto Show is happening at the same time. Exactly the same so time. stay tuned because a lot more news is coming. Andre's covering that head to toe. So stay tuned for all of that. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.